showing you how I made my Blake cosplay. So for the shoes, I found these perfectly shaped boots at Target. I started off by cutting off the fringe on the sides of the shoe. Then I used gesso to prime the bottom. Just don't apply too much because gesso will make the paint crack much easier with wear. I then used black multi-surface paint to blacken the bottom and sides of her shoes. To imitate the flat parts on her boots, I measured out four rectangle pieces that were slightly smaller than the circumference of the top of the shoe. I also cut out a piece of interfacing that was slightly smaller than the rectangle and ironed it onto one side before sewing the three sides together and flipping it inside out. The interfacing was used to give the fabric more structure for the snaps. I then top stitched the last side closed. I used the Dritz Silver heavy duty snaps in the 5 8 of an inch size for the two silver buttons on her shoe flaps. I first marked off where my decorative snaps would lie, and then very carefully I snipped a small hole with my fabric scissors. I pushed the snap through and then placed the donut looking side on the back. With the corresponding hammer tool, I then placed that in the middle of the donut back and began hammering away on a piece of wood at <laughs> uh, 2 in the morning and woke everyone up in the house. Lastly, I used E6000 to glue the top of the fabric onto the shoe. So for the black ribbon around her arms, I used just some standard satin black ribbon. I first measured the ribbon around my arm, and then I used some regular velcro and glued the fuzzy side of the velcro on one side of the ribbon, and then glued the jaggedy side of the velcro on the opposite side of the ribbon so that the ribbon would come together and close. For the black band thing on her arm, I took a stretchy piece of black fabric and just FYI, just make sure it stretches so that it can go over your arm. And I cut that out into a trapezoidish shape because Blake's armband is slightly asymmetrical. I then folded it in half and then flipped it inside out. Lastly, I hemmed the top and the bottom. The silver armor looking band was made with a regular piece of craft foam that I cut out with normal scissors. Remember to prime craft foam with gesso because if not, the craft foam absorbs the paint like cray cray. Then I painted it silver and used E6000 to glue the ends together. Lastly, I sealed everything with a triple thick varnish to give it a professional shine. I got this wig from eBay. It was okay looking, but I fixed it by adding in some tighter curls, trimming the bangs, and adding a few spritz of hairspray to keep everything in place. For the bow on her head, I bought a pack of three headbands and took the black one out. I then decided to be super picky and glued a matching piece of black fabric on the headband. I folded over the ends and then used a small ribbon to cover the fold on the inside and secured everything with blobs of E6000. I then cut out two rectangles of black fabric and two slightly smaller rectangles for the interfacing. I ironed on the interfacing on both sides. With five sides together, I sewed all four sides together and left a tiny hole so I could flip the whole thing inside out. To give the bow more support, I twisted some durable jewelry wire into a bow shape and taped the ends so that it wouldn't rip the fabric from the inside. I inserted the wire into the bow and then I hand stitched the tiny hole shut. I scrunched together the middle of the bow and then hand sewed the scrunch for security. Lastly, I glued a tiny rectangle around the middle of the bow and used more glue to secure the bow onto the headband. So for the gradient tights, I used these opaque purple tights from Uniqlo. First, to prepare your concoction, get a pot that you definitely will not miss. Also, grab some laundry detergent and white vinegar. Following the dye instructions on the box, I basically filled my pot with water and then added the dye, one cup of vinegar, and one tablespoon of laundry detergent. I kept the hot water at a constant temperature and slowly moved the tights up to create the gradient effect. I left the darker parts of the tights in longer and I left the bottom completely untouched. When you're done, let the tights cool and then run it under some cold water. Just be careful when you're doing this because you don't want the dye to drip on the purple part. Then, lie your tights flat to dry. Do not hang dry your tights because we don't want to risk the leftover dye dripping down and ruining your gradient because of gravity. When the tights are completely dried, I printed out Blake's logo and lightly traced that onto the tights with some white eyeliner. I then used white multi-surface paint to fill in the logo. 
just make sure you put a piece of cardboard or thick paper inside the tights before doing this because you don't want the paint to leak through the other side. Don't forget to put the logo on the other side of her leg as well. For the shorts, I followed a basic guide I found online that showed you how to make your own custom pattern. I'll link it in the description box below, but I did make a lot of adjustments in the end because I have no, um, <clears throat> booty, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it was pretty helpful. So here's the pattern for the back left and right of her shorts. Cut out both pieces and with right sides together, sew along the curve. Do not sew the straight line after the curve. For the front of the shorts, I patterned it as one piece and then I cut it in half to adjust for the zipper that runs through the middle. Put the right sides together and sew your 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then grab your zipper and turn it so the wrong side is facing you and base stitch the zipper onto the seam allowance only. Now flipping it over to the right side, use an exacto knife or seam seam ripper to rip the seam open which will magically expose your zipper. Now, iron the front a bit and then pin down both sides and sew a straight stitch down. You can carefully remove your basting stitch now and repeat the same steps for the other side. Then, put right sides together and sew along the curve only once again. Lastly, place the right sides together for the full front piece and back piece. Sew along the sides and the leg holes of your shorts. Then flip it inside out and hem the top and bottom. The top was patterned using a crop top. The back was pretty easy, I just traced it and the orange part here is going on the fold when you cut it out. The front part is actually made of three separate pieces, the left side, the right side, and the Y-ish looking piece in the middle, and the orange part is on fold. Don't forget your seam allowances. Sew all three of your front pieces together. Then, with right sides together, sew the back and front sides and the armholes together. Flip it inside out and then hem the top and bottom. The scarf was made by measuring the neck hole of my crop top and then cutting out a two-way stretch black rectangle in that size. I folded it in half, sewed a straight stitch down, and then hemmed the top and bottom. The main part of Blake's top is made of four main pieces that I double layered. This is the pattern I made for the front trapezoid panels. A to B is the measurement from your armpit to the middle overlap with the snap. B to C is the total length of your vest. A to D is from the middle overlap to above your shorts. Lastly, the slant for C to D is angled according to how much of your midriff you want to expose, and the length of this will hit the middle topish of your shorts. Cut out two layers for each piece and two slightly smaller trapezoids for the interfacing. Iron in the interfacing and zigzag stitch your layers together. The back pieces are two upside down house looking shapes. A to B is the measurement from your armpit to your center back. B to C is from your center back to above your upper shorts. A to E will match up with B to C from your front panel, so take that length. E to D is the length of your vest that hits around your upper thigh. And C to D is the slant that will expose part of your shorts. Cut out two layers for each piece and then two slightly smaller pieces for the interfacing. With right sides together, sew the back two pieces. Then, with right sides together again, sew in the left and right panel with a straight stitch. Now fold in all sides and hem. The straps were made by measuring the armhole of the fitted crop top. I patterned the rectangle on fold and cut out two rectangles per strap. I then folded in the sides. I pinned them together, ironed, and then sewed a straight stitch down. I then sewed a V-shape where the strap and the black jacket would connect. Lastly, I sewed it directly onto the armhole. Now we finally add our closure. The snap here is functional so you can open and close it to get in and out of the top. Mark where you want your snap to be. Then snip a small hole, push the snap on one side and this time get this piece and hammer it onto the back. On the other side, grab the back of the snap and then the donut looking piece and then also hammer that in. The triangle looking trim is made of bias tape. I used half an inch double folded black bias tape, chopped off the corners and formed a triangle by inserting the bias tape into the folds. I then used fabric glue to make the number of triangles I needed. I first glued the triangles on another piece of bias tape, and then I sewed a straight stitch down for security. Lastly, I pinned the trim I made onto the top and then sewed that stitch to match up with the top hem stitch. Okay, so for the weapon, I modified this really awesome guide that I found online. I'm still a noob when it comes to making props, so I used the cheapest and lightest materials possible. For the sword, I first made my pattern on some paper and then I traced it onto some pink insulation foam. I then pinned it down with thumbtacks and then traced it again with black sharpie. Then I prayed, <laughs> cried a little bit, and then took my X-Acto knife and began my pink insulation cutting party hell. I'm not gonna lie, this kind of takes forever to do with just an X-Acto knife. So just be patient, I guess. <laughs> 
To make the sword more 3D-like, I traced the hilt of the sword onto the Elmer's foam board and then cut two of those out. I glued each piece on either side with some Gorilla Glue. I used Drydex spackling and a putty knife to smooth this pink filler into the cracks. This is kind of fun because it's like icing a cake, and basically it fixes any bumps and imperfections from cutting the foam. When it's dry, I sanded it down and then added a strip of paper mache on the sides only for extra smoothness. The small details of this sword are made with regular craft foam and the thicker craft foam. Here are the pieces that I used. Cut out two pieces of each for both sides of the sword. I then used Gorilla Glue to secure the pieces onto the foam. The last detail is made with the green Ramune soda cap that I plucked off, glued a piece of craft foam on the bottom, and then painted black and then glued onto the other side. Now we can prime with gesso and then spray paint the whole thing black. Now paint the two white stripes and the logo. I basically just freehanded the logo. And also paint the middle a light whitish silver. Then seal everything off with an acrylic gloss spray. For the sheath, the inside where the sword slots is made of the same insulation foam as the sword itself. Just be careful when patterning and please take your time with this so that everything will fit together later. Trace the pattern out and then cry again while you cut it out and then make sure you check to see if the sword slots. If it doesn't, it's okay. Just cut away the appropriate amount of foam you need from the bottom to help it slot properly. Once you get a good fit that you're satisfied with, Cover the inside of the sheath with some fabric to protect the future paint job of the sword. Then, to make the sword more 3D-like, we are going to cut out these pieces from the Elmer's foam board. You need two more sheath inside pieces and two outside sheath pieces that will layer on top. So glue this piece first with Gorilla Glue and then glue the outside piece on top. Repeat on the other side. Make sure to keep checking if the sword still slots with every step of the way. Now we repeat the same steps as with the sword. We now use Drydex spackling, we sand, and then we paper mache the sides. The detail ridges were made with this thick craft foam that I glued on. Each piece slightly hangs over the edge so that I can connect to the other sides to make it appear seamless. Now prime with gesso, spray paint the entire thing black, and then when it dries, seal it off with an acrylic gloss spray. Lastly, I made the ribbon in the same way as I made my straps for the top, and then I glued it onto the end of the sword. And oh my baby buffaloes, we are finally done! So have fun playing with your slotting sword, because I was amusing myself with this for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and that's everything I did to transform myself into Blake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you like it, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at cationicrain, or if you want to see more updates, you can also follow me on Facebook at RainingCation. Bye bye <laughs> Okay, so you're just gonna be like, whoosh. What is whoosh? <laughs> oh shit, it's on the frame. I'm down. With the Go. <laughs>